Are we going to have another NFC East team that's going to have a very fast-paced offense? It's looking like it. Let's talk about it. Hey folks, welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. My name is Greg Sykes, I'm your host here, and this channel is, of course is dedicated to news and commentary for the Washington Commanders. If you're down with that, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel, and when you do, also make sure that you hit that subscribe button, and make sure you also hit that notification bell so you won't miss another video release. Hey. A lot of times we get into a rut with our bills, with our finances, and we need a lot of help. And one thing that my partner here with the Washington Football Maniacs wants to do is to help you out. I'm talking about our partners here at Mint Mobile. They want to help you out with your mobile cell phone bill. Look, if your family is anything like mine, you have probably at one point or another have had to make some major sacrifices. Maybe you've had an unexpected medical bill pop up or your car breaks down. Maybe you're just trying to have some money saved up for your child's education. Well, that is why I'm so intrigued by Mint Mobile, who this video is in partnership with. They offer premium wireless starting at $15 a month. I could get high-speed data and unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. I could even bring my phone along with my current phone number, contacts. I'm telling you, I am sacrificing absolutely nothing. Everything that you can do with your big-time cell phone service, you can do with Mint Mobile. So how hard is it to switch your service? I switched to Mint Mobile in less than 15 minutes. How did I do it? Well, it was easy. I just used my phone's eSIM card. 15 minutes later, let me tell you, you are up and running. You're making phone calls. You're using data. But Greg, my phone is a little bit older. I don't have one of them eSIM doohickeys. A doohickey. Oh, okay. Well, you don't need an eSIM doohickey. If you don't have an eSIM doohickey, Mint Mobile will send you a physical SIM card for free. That's right, for free. So if you want to save a little money on your wireless without making any sacrifices, why don't you go to my link in the description below. It is trymintmobile.com slash maniacs to get started on getting premium wireless service for as low as $15 a month. And this is when you sign up for a three month plan. And get this, new customers, if you sign up for a Mint Mobile plan before May 31st, you will get a six month subscription to Paramount Plus, essential on Mint Mobile. Visit Mint Mobile today. Link will be in the description below. Now back to the podcast. So Brian Robinson was talking about Cliff Kingsbury's offense, and he was uh, basically saying that it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a a bit faster as far as the, if I'm comparing it to an offense we had last year. I don't really want to go much into detail as far as what kind of play calls we would have. I just know the tempo would be faster compared to last year. We had a huddle type of offense. The offense would be more of a no huddle. So if I can give any idea of how this offense will go, it'll be a no huddle offense. So possibly, if I can compare this, it's going to be something like the Philadelphia Eagles, where you know the Eagles don't really huddle up; they just they go from one play to the next. And um, you know th this seems to be very uh, successful and effective. For the Philadelphia Eagles, and uh, at times it's it's unstoppable for the Eagles. They they can march up and down the field at will, and of course you know um, uh, Jalen Hurts he is very successful at running that offense for the Philadelphia Eagles, and um, it almost feels like that Cliff Kingsbury's offense uh, with the weapons that he has starting to kind of mimic the Philadelphia Eagles in a way. Um, and that tempo, uh, you know, you're, you're seeing more and more that uh, these offenses that are pretty successful in the NFL is more the up-tempo type of offenses. Now, that's not anything that's at the abnormal or what you consider um, a recent type of idea. Uh, 
you know, you're, you're dating back to, um, you know, at least the 90s with the Buffalo Bills. I remember that um, K-Gun offense by uh, Jim Kelly, they hardly huddled up. You know, the, they, they ran a play. And then they marched right back to the uh, the line. Jim Kelly lined them up, uh, called the play, and and they uh, they hiked the ball and went to the next play. And so that's what made them so effective and successful, and went to several Super Bowls. Is the fact that you know uh, they really didn't allow for a lot of defensive substitutions and, and things like that, and uh, they were able to you know pile up the points as well. And so um, I think uh, having more of an up-tempo type of offense, it's going to be pretty effective, uh, you know, especially when you have a lot of young guys, too. You get them into um, a, a tempo, get them into a rhythm, and that, that's really effective. I think that's, that's very important as well uh, for young guys to really get them into a rhythm early in the game. That way... Um, it, it gets the game flow into your favor and is able to uh, really uh, be effective and get to uh, you know get the upper hand um, and, and so you can hopefully win a few more ball games like that but um, you know I'm really excited to see what this uh, what this offense is going to give us um, and also you know again, we talk about this air raid offense, and immediately a lot of us think about, you know, it's the old ball coach uh, type of thing where you're just going to throw the football around the field. But in all honesty, the more that we hear about this, the more that it kind of sounds like it, it's going to be the exact opposite. Uh, the running backs are going to have a huge part in this offense. You know, I, I mean, you go out and get an Austin Eckler. You know you already have a Brian Robinson. you got a Chris Rodriguez. You go out and you draft uh, running back. So, I mean, you're going to have some guys in there who are going to have a chance to make some plays as well. And uh, I think you're going to have an opportunity to have a pretty strong running game as well. And uh, so, uh, and you know, of course, Dan Quinn and even Cliff Kingsbury has preached balance. And that means running game. Just as much of a running game as a, as a passing game as well. And... Um, so, I, I really, honestly, I can't wait to see how this offense is going to look. You know, I, I really I really think that we're going to see, obviously we're going to see much better balance than what we saw in this past year. I mean, this honestly, this past year, I think, was probably the most um, imbalanced offense I think I've ever seen in Washington. I mean, it was, it was the most imbalanced offense honestly ever I mean you had such great talent in my opinion in the backfield and un unutilized talent I mean Brian Robinson then when he got a chance to get his hands on the ball I mean he made plays and then you just went away from him I never understood that so I think he's going to have the opportunity to really touch the football a lot more and make some plays um, and I think that Cliff Kingsbury is going to be smart enough to realize that he's got to utilize the talent that he has. And I think he will. I really think he will. Um, so it's just going to be interesting to see how much different this offense is going to look. And, of course, you know, it's all going to depend on, really, what we've been harping about, the offensive line. Um, how much better is this offensive line going to perform I think also it depends on the offensive line scheme. You know, it's going to be more of a, a wider uh, protection, right? You know, they're not going to be as jammed up at, at, at the, the front. You know, there's going to be a little bit more. I want to say it's they're, they're almost like a yard um, of the distance uh, between each other. So they're going to be spread out a lot more. Um, is that going to be more of an advantage with uh, the type of talent that they have up front? Um, it remains to be seen. Uh, what type of offensive lineman fits better with the scheme? Is it more of an athletic offensive lineman? Maybe I don't. I don't know. Um, but um, you know, I, I'm not as well versed in in the air raid as opposed to the other offenses. So, especially when it comes to um, protection up front. So. 
uh, really want to see how this works out with the talent that we have currently. You know, a lot of us, myself included, have really harped about um, just not really being so sure about Brandon Coleman. Is it, you know, is he going to be able to hold up to be, you know, the rigors of um, the left tackle position? Is he going to be able to win out and hold up and be a good solid left tackle? Because a lot of us didn't feel like we really truly address that position like we should have although knowing you cannot address every single position within one off season it's almost impossible to do that and i know it's funny how some people argue with that but it's true you can't i don't know of any team that's ever been able to really truly do that uh, no matter how successful they have been you really honestly you can't do that so um it remains to be seen. Maybe, maybe he turns out to be uh, the next uh, Trent Williams. That would be awesome. That would be great. Um, the only thing I would say is let's just hope that in saying that, he turns out to be a guy who doesn't get disgruntled with the medical staff and he actually stays with us for the long haul. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I, I want to see an up-tempo type of offense. I want to see an offense that... Um, I mean, if they do mimic the Philadelphia Eagles, it's going to be that's going to be nasty, you know, because I am always nervous about that Philadelphia Eagles offense. They wear defense down fast, right? I mean, defenses a lot of times are gassed by halftime because you know they're not going to huddle up. They're going to they're going to keep pounding at you. They're going to keep going up and down the field. And, uh, you know, even on fourth down, if it's fourth and one, you know what play they're calling that can almost not be stopped whatsoever. So, um, you know, I mean, it's it's just, it's almost unfair, right? And uh, so let's see, let's see how Washington does it. You know, let, let's see if they can be just as successful with that no huddle, fast paced type of offense. Um, let's see if they have their own little, tush push <laughs> installed as well um i know they don't have their their kelsey so we'll have to see how that works out anyway folks hope you enjoyed this podcast if you did give it a like give it a share and with that said we will see you in the next one